Hey guys, happy Friday. Today is Friday the 13th. I know sometimes people make that be a scary day, but it's a special day for us in our home. Uh, my youngest son uh, is turning, my only son, is turning 18 today. And so let's wish Seth a very, very happy uh, 18th birthday and just many blessings and many uh, increase of favor uh, will continue to rest upon him all uh, of his days. And so again, we've been talking about God's favor. You know, Psalm 512 says, surely the Lord will bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor. You know, of course, as with the shield. And we, and we just been declaring that we're surrounded by God's favor. And we've been talking about four things or four keys or four points to release the favor uh, of God in our lives. So the favor of God has changed our lives it will continue to change our lives as we put a demand on it. And we've been saying this. One, we already have God's favor. Two, you receive God's favor um, by faith. Three, we said God is searching for someone to bless with his favor. And lastly, number four, you must release your faith for God's favor. So God's favor is ours. Let's, let's settle that fact. Um, but there are a couple of things you must do to fully enjoy all the benefits of God's favor. First, you must receive God's favor like every other spiritual promise. Then you must release your faith. And one of the things they taught us in Bible school is Brother Hagin has that book, has a book about that, how to release your faith, how to release your faith. You release your faith with your words. You release your faith with your words. What are you saying about God's favor in your life? And that's literally what Abraham, the father of faith, did. The circumstances look kind of tight, uh, hopeless even. When God promised him he would be the father of a great multitude, when he first said that to him, he was 75, his wife was 65, and they had no kids. And, and so Sarah's lifelong barrenness, how could that be? But they received God's promise by faith. And they received the promise that God's favor would work uh, in their lives. So for Abraham, human reason, I'm reading from Romans, hope being hope. I'm sorry, for Abraham, human reason for a hope being gone, hoped in faith that he should be the father of many nations as he had been promised. So, number, so numberless shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered the, the utter impotence of his own body, which was as good as dead because he was about 100 years old. Or when he considered the bareness of Sarah, Sarah's uh, dead womb, no unbelief or distrust made him waver, doubtingly questioned concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong and was empowered by faith as he gave praise and glory Unto God, fully satisfied and sure that God was able and mighty to keep his word and to do what he had promised. And it says righteousness standing acceptable to God will be granted and credited to us who believe, who believe in, trust in, adhere to and rely on God who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. And it says through him also we have our access or entrance, introduction by faith into this grace, this state of God's favor in which we firmly and safely stand. So I'm reading Romans 4 and also we slipped over into to, uh, Romans 5. Just look at Romans 5 again. We have access by faith into grace or God's favor surrounds us as our faith releases it. I really want you to put a demand and, and just really begin to put a demand on God's favor in your life, in circumstances and situations where you need a victory, you need a miracle, you need the favor of God to, to show up. So we just like Abraham. So we're just like him, man. And, and just like uh, how it, his life is, is just how it is in life for all of us. You know, sometimes things just don't look right. Things look bad. You know, but we have to learn and walk in faith and face the natural facts. And we believe God anyway. You got to trust God anyway. You got to believe God despite the circumstances. And so we grow to the point where we can hear bad news without wavering in our faith and receive God's favor no matter what the circumstances are. So you may hear bad report, but you got to stand. You may hear some bad news, but you got to stand, right? Because receiving God's favor by faith is a simple act on our part. So I want, you, I want you to take a moment right now and say, you know what? I got the favor of God working in my life. And so get into God's word. Put the word into your heart and speak it. That's how you release your faith, remember, and believe it 
and act on it and receive it. So when you do, you will be victorious in every area of your life. There's no situation. There's no circumstance. There's nothing that is stronger than the grace of God, than the favor of God that surrounds you. And so whatever you may be facing today, let's make this declaration. Stand up if you have to and, and get right and, 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 and right, get right in the face of that situation, right in the face of that circumstance and say this, I'm a born again child of Almighty God. Come on, say it again. I'm a born again child of Almighty God. His supernatural favor surrounds me like a shield this very moment. His grace is more than enough to deliver me out of his trouble. My faith is in God's word, and I'm coming out of this triumphantly by the favor of God. We're coming out. We're walking the overflow. We're, we're, we're walking in as overcomers. We have the victory because of the favor of God, and we're going to pause and give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for his miraculous gift of love, his miraculous gift of life that he's given us through Jesus Christ. Come on, guys. Let's celebrate this weekend. Let's celebrate the favor of God. Look forward to seeing you right back here on Monday for the Faith for Today podcast. Enjoy your weekend.